Hi, greetings from London. It's going to be a thematic week in oil this week with Cyril Week in Houston. And the themes are already pretty clear, which is the strength of Chinese oil demand and the extent to which that continues with the Chinese having lowered or put out a relatively low GDP target for this year, but nevertheless 5% growth on that enormous economy. And of course, the natural rebound from the COVID lows of last year, especially combined with the strength of demand in India, all make this look like it'll be a strong year for oil demand. And uh, just a story I was reading this morning was uh, BP backing off their peak oil demand call from 2020, which was almost as bad a call as their strategy shift was. But anyway, Cyril Week will set the theme uh, for this week. Uh, the other side of that we're part of insofar as we published a note about the struggles of global oil supply. The combined balance comes out, according to the IEA, at 3 million barrels a day short oil supply over demand by Q4 of this year, which obviously sets up very bullish. And part of the theme, as I mentioned, is that we wrote a note called Pioneer PowerPoint Pathology, where we highlight the ongoing struggle of uh, US EMPs to maintain productivity in oil supply. And of course, this has come through very strongly in the Q2, Q4 results that we've just finished with Oxy rounding out last week with, guess what, uh, higher capex and uh, not a whole lot more oil supply growth. Of course, the capital discipline remains in place. The higher capex pertains to inflation. Uh, so activity levels are not going up very greatly. But then again, at the moment, the oil price is not really uh, supporting it. The thematic that we wrote about Pioneer simply takes their public slides on inventory over the past three quarters and highlights that by derivation, you can see that about half of Pioneer's inventory, which the company itself touts as the, the deepest inventory and, and longest lived inventory of any major US EMP in the Permian, uh, that inventory uh, by, as I said, derivation from the company's PowerPoint slides is 50% tier three which is a somewhat nebulous concept, but essentially you can say it's lower productivity than what they've been drilling in the past. And of course that becomes a problem for global oil supply because as we highlight in the note, the Wolf Camp alone, the Wolf Camp alone over the period 2010 to 2021 represented 2.5 million barrels a day of global oil supply growth, which was the biggest by some way source of global oil supply, including all the countries in the world. The next biggest was Canada with 2 million barrels a day. So you can't underestimate the importance of inventory issues in US EMP, and that's a theme. I mentioned that the oil price is not getting out of its own way. And yesterday in our Sunday note, we just highlighted that with considerable volatility and major moves in the dollar, the oil price has essentially continued at a steady $84 a barrel. And the question really becomes the need for the breakout in that price if we're going to get excited about the US oil stocks because essentially we think they're fair value uh, if not slightly overvalued possibly in the current environment and the reason I mentioned slightly overvalued is simply that our forecast for Pioneer for example yield this year is 6% 7% maybe and of course you can get a T-bill for just about 5% so the potential for the oils to outperform is looking uh, pretty low until we get a breakout in oil and we simply haven't been seeing that. And it's likely over the course of the year, given the balance, but at the moment it's just not happening. And our call in the note is actually to be long Marcellus and short Permian this year. Because when we look at global commodity of energy price tracking with, for example, the fall off in coal prices, the fall off in European gas prices, uh, the one price that's actually turned and is looking much more healthy, albeit from a low base, is the US natural gas price. Have a great week.